In this video, I will show you how to loop a rigid body simulation made by Ducky3D, but actually kind of not. You see, it's nearly impossible to seamlessly loop the animation, but we can make it so that you have to be looking for a loop to find one. The first way we can do this is by seamlessly looping these rings. The first thing we need to do to seamlessly loop the rings is make sure they're going the same speed. So I'll select one of them, and I can go over here to item by pressing N, and I can see here I've used the hash the trick hashtag frame frame divided by 20 or some number to animate it however this one's frame divided by 20 and this one is frame divided by 25 so I'll just change that back to 20 and now they're moving at the same speed this means we can find a spot where other than this one where the rotation is equal so if I go to frame 63 they're both equal to 180 degrees which is the same effectively as uh, zero degrees. So, because it's a torus and it's perfectly even. So the next step is that uh, we need to make sure that since frame 63 is when they're even again, we need to make sure that our, our animation starts on frame 63 and then the end is a multiple of 63 minus one. So I'll set the start to 63 and we'll set the end to 63 times 3 minus 1. And it's minus 1 because the end of the animation has to be one frame behind the start. So now if we play, our rings are seamlessly looped. Now we do have to make sure that, uh, we do have to make sure that our cache includes this limit. Okay. So the next thing we can do to make this animation loop seamlessly, or as close as we can to it, is add more frames. Because the more frames there are, the less likely someone is to be paying attention when the animation loops. So I'll set this to 63 times 6 minus 1. I'll check that our rings still loop. Yes, they do. And now I'll set this end to uh, 377 because I can see that's the end of the animation all right and I want to make sure the start is still frame one because that's important for when all of my particles smash into each other at the very beginning so now it's gonna animate I go to the end and it does that so the next thing we need to do is make sure our particles are in the same spot at the end of the animation as they are at the start so I'll just save that real quick we need to bake our animation so let's click bake over here. Oh, and if you're wondering how to get to this area, it'll finish baking and then I'll show you. So if you click this scene properties button, then it'll have it'll probably look like this. Open rigid body world and make sure that's where your uh, simulation start and end time are. And this is your bake controls. So now it's doing that, good, good, good. So what we need to do is make sure that only our particles are shown. So I'll just, uh, we, we can actually click and drag on the eyeballs until we get down to a particle. The plane is not a particle, click down, down and click and drag on those. So now all we have are our particles. So I'm gonna press A, I'm gonna select one of the particles and I'm gonna press F3. And I'm gonna type, type rigid body and I'm gonna find bake to keyframes. I'm going to click that and then click OK. So now what we need to do is select the last couple of keyframes here and I'm just going to delete them. Now we need to go to the end of the animation. I'm going to click select. Oops, select. And I'm going to find select before current frame and that'll select all the keyframes on our current frame. Now I'm going to press shift D, X and drag those over there. GX, and I want them to be one frame behind the end of the animation, as with the rings. Now, we don't want this to be a straight line, we want it to be somewhat smooth, so I'm gonna click Bezier animation type. And now, effectively what this has done, this means they animate normally like this. We can go to the end, and now it's gonna reset so that it'll loop again. I'm gonna unhide everything. So this is not exactly perfect. You can tell, you can tell here it's normal and then here it's not. So the next thing we can do is I can go to my camera here. Oops. 
Come on. Oh my gosh. Camera, finally, sorry. Failing to click on the camera. But all I'm gonna do is go over here and on the distance, I'm gonna make sure I have depth of field checked and I'm gonna make sure my distance is, or I can, by the way, I can go to viewport display and turn on limits. And so that way we can see where our, uh, our distance is for our depth of field. So I can just move that slider until that empty starts to disappear. Then I know that's good. Now I'm gonna press I, and now that I have this keyframe selected, I'm just gonna kind of go like this, slightly move them around. But once this starts, I'm just gonna go way up, and I'm gonna take this one, Shift D X, and head back. I'm gonna set all of them to interpolation type like that. Now I'm gonna see how bad this is. Yeah, as I suspected. Oh. By the way, I kind of forgot about this, but you can't have negative distance. So I'll just kind of pull those up right there. That is going to cause our animation to be blurry during certain parts. Although now this part is too strong. All right, so now essentially what we've done is we've made the ring seamless. We've made the particles kind of seamless. We've made the animation longer. And we've also made it so that it's harder. We've also made it so that it's harder to see the part that isn't seamless. Hope this video helped. Here's another video right here.